let's get started for today. I have an interesting piece I want to take a look at, which is this one, but it's got no body. We got to give it some body. We got to give it some volume. And I'm going to use Portrait Studio to help me out with that. What is Portrait Studio? Well, I'll tell you. Portrait Studio is a software uh, that Abu and I developed, um, and it helps you build references for your paintings. You've got busts, you've got figures, posable mannequins, you've got everything. You control the light, the camera, um, and the, uh, the figure, and a lot of other stuff like background value. You get five different types of light sources, or six, um, that you can use all at the same time. It's all real time. It doesn't require any rendering or baking. Um, and uh, it's amazing and it's on sale right now and the sale will no longer be active after June 1st because June 1st my master class is coming up. My master class is uh, the uh, totality of all of my portraiture skills put into a very very short five hour tutorial master class which is going to be sold at around 80 to 90 dollars most likely it'll stick to 80 um, and it'll be released June 1st. Uh, so for everyone, it's a 14-day it's a challenge portraiture companion class. It has all different skin colors. Uh, skin gets yes, color. Um, it's not just in grayscale, but the main tutorial is in grayscale because, of course, I want to prioritize the educational factor behind it, not just the fun of it. The fun comes later in a separate tutorial added to the, uh, to the, to the master class pack. So you get everything for $80. Uh, including the mini book, um, my brushes, a bunch of other resources, templates I make for you to use. Um, it just, the list goes on. It's a lot of stuff you get with that master class. That's it. Let's get started on today's class. So I wanted to pose the mannequin real quick. I wanted to pose it um, and then go from there. And anytime you add a background, if you've ever looked through, like I dare you right now to look through the most popular league splashes, they all have a silhouette to some level because you have to differentiate the object from the background. A silhouette is in different spectrum. There's a spectrum of silhouettes. There's extreme blackout silhouette with the light behind and you don't see anything but the figure or there's just you know, a fraction of a silhouette, which is what I always do. Uh, so so I, I play with the spectrum a lot. So you guys should check out those league splashes and see how uh, other artists have managed them. Not that league art is the epitome of art, but it's just functional. Um, so I'm gonna pose her according to the attitude I'm seeing. She's got a lot of attitude, okay? I basically, the best way to pose your figures so that they look real on Portrait Studio, because I know a lot of you, if you don't have anatomy knowledge, you'll pose stuff that doesn't feel real. So right now I twisted up her body a little bit so she feels like she's standing a little bit more naturally, but what that's done is it's left one leg longer than the other. Well, in real life, this also happens, and what we do is that we just push one leg out a little further, and you're just rotating the model till that feels natural, and then you flatten the foot. So that's what we do in real life. We kind of just uh, uh, have that kind of Hellenic heel, uh, lean, uh, or we do something where one leg is bent a little bit as well um, uh, to make up for that distance it needs to cover uh, in order to be back level with the other straight leg, okay? Um, so that's how you kind of have hips that feel asymmetrical. It's because one hip has a straight leg under it, um, and the other hip is more relaxed with a bent knee under it. It's not that one leg is longer than the other, though one of my legs is longer than the other and it's causing me a lot of pain day to day. Um, and then I'm just going to decide what I'm gonna do with, uh, with the arms. So for the arms, you also wanna remember that the arms can rotate this way. I'm not sure what term to use. They can, they can rotate, um, let's say, front to back uh, 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 when you're using these. So arm joints, all of them are super flexible. And the reason why your models look stiff or your figures or your drawings or whatever, what have you, look stiff is because you guys forget how flexible human joints are, how much mobility they actually have. And if you want an example or a, a, a uh, an idea of how flexible they are is that when you get injured, the slightest motion hurts. That's because everything is connected. Everything is um, uh, intertwined. So that's why the slightest little motion in your hands can hurt your elbow. 
Um, so everything is flexible. Everything is just like constantly kinetic. It's constantly moving. You can move your shoulders. You can move your elbow to point at your chest or to point at the wall on the opposite side. You can move your wrists around. Everything feels so wormy. Um, so when you guys use these really stiff motions of left to right, up and down, you forget to make arms feel more wormy. Yes, legs are not that. They're more structural because they hold up a lot of weight. They're more robotic, I could say, and mechanical, but arms are very warm-like. Um, and then one thing I'm going to do is just raise the shoulder. And then kind of just do that little twist she has in the body and then just raise the neck up a little bit and then relax the shoulder and what it's basically the best thing about Porsche Studio I think is the lighting I think how you know just clean and, and quick it is I'm just gonna hide the joints and you don't have to worry too much about um, again like baking or baking time or rendering and all that so you just get to really enjoy uh, the the modeling aspect and then you just take the picture and then you bring it back to your to your Photoshop um, so after I get the general idea of the gesture basically what's her attitude what's the story I'll apply the lighting and once I'm happy with the lighting I'll do something with the um, once I know the lighting because the lighting is part of the story and I need that in order to complete the pose so one thing I feel like she's doing, she's not really doing her, that whole, um, um, you know, hands on the waist, angry, pouty snob. I feel like she's holding something as well. Maybe she's playing with something in her hand, which might make for a more uh, sinister gesture. And then this hand could be a bit more relaxed, maybe on her stomach. And uh, she's just, or idle. Um, and she's just doing something like that. As for the lighting, uh, if you were to do something where the light is behind her, she's in a hallway, um, she's just this evil villain, a group of kids snuck into this mansion to steal back something she took from them, and uh, kind of like Golden Compass style, and she catches them and she says to her little evil monkey minion slash whatever, get them, and then, uh, and then you know, that's the moment that we see her in the hall windows going down the hall and she is uh, basically holding the object that they want. So I have to write a story in order for that for me to know what's happening in this narrative and then make decisions for the gesture. So why is she writing this story? Because I have to know what the story is. That The story decides the gesture, decides the lighting, it decides everything. So when you guys forget that you have to be writers, your art sucks because it has nothing behind it. It's just it's just nothing. It's just streamers um, and paper mache. Like you guys forget that in order to build an illustration, we're taking a picture of an event. What is the event? Um, so that's the event I see in my mind. That's the one I've always seen when I when I looked at this drawing. So I'm just going to enlarge this canvas and take from this um, take from this. Uh, uh, portrait studio shot what I can and uh, we'll go from there it doesn't take a lot of work so remember I don't have time to paint the body um, I'm just gonna photo photo bash the portrait studio model which is something that portrait studio is good for as well but really what I want to do is exaggerate the hip and exaggerate the shoulder and then just pull her face and features down so she feels a little bit more conniving, a little bit more um, like a person who plans things, I guess. Okay, and, um, and I'm just going to correct that. Okay, and, uh, and then just pick an environment. So the environment behind that them, I kind of want to mess around with it a little bit. Um, I kind of wanted to have an, a background that had a bit of architecture. I'm not sure how much I could get away with in the time I have. 
All right, so I'm just gonna do one set of rays, making sure that they're sharp at the start, fuzzier at the, at the end. And that's how we get that believable light. And then it reaches the other side. Just like that and create sort of a square shape on the nearby window, on the nearby wall that it falls on. Okay, and, uh, and I'm just gonna fuzz that out. All right, and then I'm gonna duplicate that, enlarge it, and use it on this window here and uh, at a much less degree, much lower degree. And, and maybe mess around with curtains in a second. But what I want to do now that I know where the light source is coming from, I want to just no, you know, basically build the inner inside box of the of the environment. So the inside, everything should be much darker. I want to open her eyes up so they can be a little bit less gentle. So right now the eyes are very gentle, meaning that they're half closed. And so they're a little bit easier on the eyes. But when eyes are fully open or just almost fully open, they're a little bit more unsettling increasing the energy in an illustration, increasing that that tempo that makes it feel like things are moving and they're moving pretty quickly. And if it's in that story I wrote earlier, that get them story, that um, siege, uh, kind of like a escape story, then it fits very well and matches the energy. And I kind of want to give her an unnatural glow to her eyes, not a, it's more like a Disney villain glow than a magical glow and I just want to keep going so the features are very gentle in that they're very, they hardly move the, the eyes were very soft the eyes were very um, the eyes were very uh, mild I would say the eyebrows weren't showing too much uh, expression And I want to just push the expression a little bit further. So I'm going to push those eyebrows down and open the eyes up even more. They still feel a little bit soft. I want to raise one eyebrow up. And this is a moment of victory for her. This is uh, a gotcha moment for her. Um, so. So she should have a bit more um, satisfaction at her victory. And that's where we're messing around here. Uh, but I want to show a bit more crazy eye, just a touch more. And then we'll bring everything together and flesh out some stuff. And, um, for illustrations that are this big, obviously you want to spend most of your time on the background because it takes up a lot of space. You don't want to spend too much time zoomed in working on a portrait that's hardly visible from that level um, while zooming out. People aren't just going to spend hours scrolling through your image the way you might think. They just won't. People don't do that. Um, so you have to prioritize. Uh, and I'm just going to clean up. I want I wanted to push this elbow in even further, actually. And just messing around some more. So these full classes are available to patrons. Um, but uh, only the recordings are submitted to YouTube. Um, so yeah, one thing I want to do is just exaggerate the gesture line of the of the of the figure. Um, I don't like her figure at all. Uh, looks a bit old, uh, but I'll keep trying. 
and then uh, just getting rid of that shadow there and then borrowing from the light source and adding that shadow to the skin adding that light to the skin so so wherever the skin might get some of that light half the chin half the arms half the neck whatever light can get through the hair doesn't matter and uh, I'm just going to get a little bit more of that cooler red to the skin instead of the orange it was at before. And I uh, want to move her mouth up. So when a mouth smiles, the mouth moves up, moves up in the face. It doesn't uh, stay low like it was. And um, I'm just going to blend a little bit more. And then just to show she has a bit of hatred to her, um, we're going to squint her eyes. You can squint only on one, you can squint on both, but it's just to show ha ha, I won, you lost type of expression. Again, not too much work should be done zoomed into the portrait, but this is enough. I'm going to strengthen the dark spot so they read from a distance and see how I'm zoomed out. Okay, so that silhouette that I talk about is really important because it, it, it answers all your questions when it comes to dramatic scenes. There's not, you don't have to do a lot to get it to work. I mean, you don't have to have a complete set of shadows uh, around the character and then a light specifically around the character. You could just have the silhouette hang out around the head. You can have the silhouette as just revealing the body so you could bring the head down and shadow behind the head but light underneath the body to reveal the body if that's what you want to show up. Now this looks much more uh, mysterious especially if we throw a shadow over um, revealing only, only the eyes as uh, bright points. Uh, just like that and that. But I like the point where it was before where we had a bit of uh, a little bit of everything where we had some light behind her. I'm reminding myself that it's the rec start of this with only a square portrait. Um, it's not a lot that I've done in, in this time but uh, it really isn't uh, because it's a very simple layer organization and playing with values. Um, but uh, all you have to remember is really there is a, a set of rules you have to follow when you're talking about designing for uh, uh, media and the silhouette is the most important thing really to learn. You got to learn the silhouette um, and the silhouette is used everywhere. Uh, look, look at, you know, league splashes, look at uh, book covers, look at movie posters. The silhouette is extremely important. Before I add any of that silhouette bloom, uh, I, I want to make one window brighter than the other just because it's coming in like that. Um, and then finally, I'm just going to add the bloom in. And that's what's going to make it look a bit more dangerous. And then this is the layer I save for last because you can't paint through it. It's impossible to paint through it. Um, so that's why I just save it last instead of turning it on and off and having it another friggin layer for me to uh, to jump through. That's just my go-to ray brush and that's that ray of light that completes the silhouette. So it's not necessarily a silhouette anymore because you've got light on the character. Um, it's not really about uh, having only one kind of light source. I don't you rarely I rarely have only one kind of light source um, in a painting so she's in between two light sources extreme from the side which makes her look a little crazy because again it's that distortion uh, makes her look a little bit unhinged and then the silhouette from the back which makes her look mysterious the reason why we're always using silhouettes is because we are always painting mysterious stories they're like great for it I feel like one of her legs could be in front 
And so all these mysterious characters we're always talking about in our in our portfolios, these mysterious um, characters in the shows we watch. Um, there we go. That actually looks great. So I'm just going to keep it there. The, the, the mystery, especially the newfound mystery in nearly everything that we watch. Like, let's say they, they did My Little Pony live action. I swear to God they'll add mystery to it. And if you think I'm joking, what did Disney do to the, to the Winnie the Pooh live action remake? They just added mystery. Did you see how much shadow they added? It almost looked like a horror flick because that's how much shadow they added to a character that's supposed to be childlike fun and wonder. They didn't make it childlike fun and wonder, they made it childlike fun and mystery. Um, and that's what to do with some of the silhouettes and the and the angles they used at the start of the, sh of the story. So silhouettes, learn to love them because they are in everything and they are trending, meaning that everything in the way we tell stories nowadays has to do with silhouettes. So the silhouette can be used anywhere. It's a, it's a narrative tool. I use it because it's the literally the best one for storytelling because you can do whatever you want with it obviously the before and after is and it's it's not wasn't a portrait review um but it's what i saw when i looked at her and looked at that attitude she has there's a beetle on my table um it's that i saw that little moment standing in a hallway with the light behind her it's it's what you want to see when you see a character that's super powerful that's um that's kind of evil, that feels strong, but sinister, just like her. All right, so obviously the before and after is not what we're doing here, um, but this I want to show you how that inspired me and then the after. You don't have to throw your character in a light, in a silhouette only. Um, that's just a blackout, and I've never painted a character blackout. That's always been a combination with another light source. Um, uh, so thank you guys for watching if you want to support if you learned something from today's class Please consider joining as a dollar. That's just one dollar a month for all of these free uh, classes um, eight, eight hours a month up to of classes for only a dollar That's twelve dollars a year or less after patreon um, takes its cut uh, So if you want to support please do I know you may say the next person will do it But I really want to get to a thousand patrons um, come next year at a dollar. Uh, that way it, the, the, the whole community feels a little bit more stable for me. It feels like something I can do forever, long term, no matter what my job situation, how it alters. Um, but uh, please consider joining for a dollar. Um, and then if you have any uh, uh, interest in buying Porches Studio, it's, at, it's on my store, istabrack.com, on the store icon here. Um, and it will stop being on sale June 1st. It'll go back up to like 60% of the original price. Um, it may go back up to 90. I'm not 100% sure if I could justify bringing it back up to 90. I mean, it's worth it. But I don't want to charge too much because I know the majority of my demographic is just teenagers and young adults who don't have a lot of money. Um, and I, I'm not here trying to gouge every person that comes through my channel. I'm here building a community for people to help people learn, to give them learning opportunities. To I posted the full two hours of our community challenge last month. So this is very community driven, um, but, it, but it will go back up to a price that's a little bit more fair for me uh, after June. June 1st, the masterclass will be released. So that's why I'm raising the price of one. Um, and uh, uh, it'll just be a full portraiture masterclass. So it'll be about how to paint a portrait from scratch with grayscale, how to apply color, how to apply different skin tones um, uh, from super light to really dark um, and uh, uh, so up to 7,000 words, a mini notebook written by me, It's basically a written version of the tutorials um and templates my brushes it comes with so much stuff and it's available june 1st on gumroad i'll link you guys i'll post it everywhere don't worry you're not gonna miss it um so thank you everyone for watching i'll see you guys next week the 17th at 5 p.m eastern bye everyone